Hello beautiful people, today I'm going to be talking about how to use rosehip oil. Let's deep dive into it. Rosehip oil is moisturizing, it's not hydrating. There's a difference between these two, moisturizing and hydrating. A moisturizer forms a thin layer on top of the skin and retains the moisture that's already on the skin. It's not going to add any hydration to the skin. A hydrating ingredient on the other hand brings in hydration from the environment or from wherever and brings it all to the skin surface like hyaluronic acid is hydrating. So if you need some hydration to the skin after you cleanse your face it's important that you don't straight away go into rosehip oil. You should start off with a hyaluronic serum which is going to add all the hydration you need to the face and then top it up with rosehip oil. Rosehip oil is an emollient meaning it's going to form a thin layer on top of the skin and act as a shield and prevent water from the deeper layers of the skin from evaporating into the environment. When you lay your skincare products, as a general rule of thumb, start from the lighter formulation skincare products and then slowly move on to the thicker ones. Cleanse your face first, leave it a bit damp and then apply a water-based serum. This could be maybe a hyaluronic serum or a niacinamide serum. Hyaluronic is a humectant. Humectants are water magnets. It attracts water from the environment and brings all that water, the hydration to the surface of the skin and then top it up with rosehip oil. But on some days, you might prefer something more thicker than the rosehip oil. Rosehip oil only forms a thin layer on top of the skin. So maybe on top of the rosehip oil, you might want to seal all the moisture in by using a thick cream. Here's another scenario. Cleanse your face, leave it a bit damp and then maybe you would add a water-based serum like a, a hyaluronic acid and then you would add a moisturizer which has got a very light texture which feels lighter in texture than the rose of oil. Maybe you want to add this moisturizer because it's got niacinamide in it and then you would on top of this moisturizer add the rosehip oil and then finally you might want to seal it off with a thick cream. I keep saying cream, basically the difference between a cream and a moisturizer is all dependent on the ingredients. Creams and moisturizer, the names as such don't mean anything much anymore. Look at the ingredients, a thick cream is something which has got all oil based ingredients and ingredients like paraffin which has got a very thick texture and which you know when you touch it is going to form a thick layer on top of the skin and seal everything in. Because rosehip oil is very lightweight in texture and it's got a very non-greasy feel to it, you can also use it as a makeup primer beneath your makeup. So what it would do is it's going to fill in all the gaps on your skin and get your skin all prepped up for the makeup which is going to come on top of it. So that's a good makeup primer as well, the rosehip oil. Now rosehip oil is very high in linoleic acid. Linoleic acid is lightweight and non-greasy and that's why rosehip oil, though it's an oil, is very lightweight and non-greasy. Rosehip oil gets absorbed into the skin very quickly, which is again a very good thing. Rosehip oil, in fact all facial oils should only be applied in the night time because in the daytime, sunscreen should always be your top layer. Now rosehip oil or any facial oil can go and dilute sunscreens and this you don't want to happen. Sunscreen is a holy grail. It is the one which is going to do most of the work in your entire skin cabin. So you need nothing to mess with that sunscreen. You don't need to use too much rosehip oil on the face. Just two or three drops of rosehip oil will be fine. Rosehip oil does not clog pores. Rosehip oil can be used if your skin is acne prone, if you've got oily skin, dry skin, normal skin. Rosehip oil is extracted from the seeds of a plant called Rose Canina. In any plant oil, the extraction method is really important. The extraction method should make sure that most of the active components of the raw material is preserved. 
cold pressing is a very effective extraction method and during cold pressing no heat should be used so if you're buying rosehip oil make sure that the cold pressing method is used for extraction and try and see if the manufacturer also mentions that there's been no heat used in the cold pressing method in your skincare routine you need to have an intention behind using a skincare ingredient what are the benefits that that particular skincare ingredient will offer to the skin and are those the benefits that you're after studies show that acne prone skin is low in linoleic acid what happens is sebum which is the oil produced by the oil glands in the skin when it's low in linoleic acid yes sebum also has linoleic acid when the sebum is low in linoleic acid it just goes and gets clogged inside the pores it can't flow easily out of the pores now when you apply rosehip oil because rosehip oil is rich in linoleic acid it goes and helps that sebum to flow out of the pores it unclogs the pores another thing rosehip oil does is it regulates the excess sebum production so basically sometimes oil excess oil gets produced by the skin and all this excess oil which is also called the excess sebum goes and clogs the pores now this is really bad because whenever there's any clogging in the pores it attracts bacteria and all this bacteria they have a fine party and that's actually the start of all the blackheads and the whiteheads and the pimple and the acne so you don't want any anything to clog the pores you need to keep unclogging the pores regularly so linoleic acid in rosehip oil can help in regulating the sebum production it tries its best to make sure that excess amount of sebum does not get produced because a stop to excess sebum means that excess sebum is not going to go and clog the pores Another thing rosehip oil can do for acne prone skin is the visible layer of the skin the dead cells there the old dead cells they need to fall off regularly and make way for the newer and the younger looking cells from the deeper layers of the skin but sometimes these old cells they refuse to fall off some of them are very stubborn and these stubborn old cells you know what they do they go and make their way and find the pores and clog the pores and we know that clogging of the pores is not a good thing because that's how all the acne and the pimples and all that get started so what um, uh, rosehip oil can do is it can gently nudge those old stubborn cells and say knock knock time for you to fall off so that newer and the younger ones from the deeper layers can make its way up to the top so it does that gently pushes off those old cells and thus prevents the clogging of these uh, old cells clogging of the pores by the old cells so if you've got acne prone skin or if you just want to unclog the pores or if you feel there's too much oil on your face and you just want to regulate that rosehip oil that day on that routine will be a good addition to your skin rosehip oil brightens the skin so if you've got a dull feeling to the skin if you feel that your skin is dull use the rosehip oil so basically it is getting rid of the old cells the stubborn old cells which are refusing to fall off and instantly brightening your skin rosehip oil can also boost the collagen production it's got retinoic acid in it which is a proven anti-aging ingredient it's got a lot of evidence to back up it's claimed that it's a good anti-aging ingredient it can boost the collagen production so this retinoic acid in rosehip oil is very effective so now and then just even if you've not got any acne on your skin if you haven't got any oily skin or anything like that you might still want to incorporate rosehip oil into your skincare routine because that will help boost that collagen production rosehip oil is a nice add on to the skin cabin it does a lot of things for the skin but it can't replace any of the serums that you might currently be using it can't replace an anti aging serum where a retinol or a retinoid is the active ingredient it can't replace an exfoliating product that you might be using it's a nice little add on which you can use in between your other serums in the days in between using the other serums or you can use it in addition to those serums make sure your rosehip oil product has not gone rancid exposure to sun and uh, light it can make the oil go rancid make sure it's not past its expiry date make sure it hasn't gone rancid because if it does go rancid and you apply that on your skin it'll bring a lot of other not so pleasant 
things on your skin. That's it. If you liked this video, please give it a like and do subscribe to the channel. That will really help me a lot. Another quick thing, I've got an email newsletter wherein I share some skincare tips and none of these skincare tips are going to take more than two to three minutes to read. The entire newsletter will at most take you two to three minutes to read. All these tips are delivered to your email inbox. If you would like to go on the list, please subscribe to the email list and I'll provide a link to that in the description below. That's it. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.